Today we do a uh, plastic bumper repair. We see the damage on the car. It was uh, caused by a collision. There's a small hole in the bumper, so we're going to have to address that by doing some plastic repair. Now, naturally, the first step is to uh, give ourselves access to the back of the bumper. And uh, the only way to do that is to actually remove it from the car. Uh, anyway, any bumper repair you do, taking it off the car is the uh, right way of doing it because you can actually paint in the uh, in all of the, uh, the interfaces. First thing I do is I check if there's any uh, any structural damage to the car. If there's if there is, we'll address that. Clean, 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 clean. Um, it's a it's a very clean job uh, doing uh, body work on cars because there are so many contaminants that you need to remove before you actually sand them in. You can think about uh, wax, grease, and uh, all that stuff. This is the hole that we're going to have to repair. You can see there's uh, quite a few scratches too we're going to have to address. I'll uh, do some uh, dent removal. Uh, you can think about this as uh, sort of a paintless dent removal but for plastic. You can do, uh, you can do it without damaging the paint actually. So. Uh, if you have some dents on bumpers that, uh, in which the, the paint is not compromised, you can actually uh, uh, you know, take the dents off uh, with a little heat. Now uh, start preparing the, uh, the surface. Uh, actually here I'm exploring the uh, extent of the damage and uh, sanding the entire damage area. Again we clean, clean, clean uh, the back uh, it's very important. See now it's completely clean. So um, the uh, the actual uh, repair material will stick. Uh, nothing will stick on dirty surfaces. So now I'm giving uh, the repair material some uh, tooth. This is a 60 grit uh, Rolock uh, disc, and I'm I'm going very slowly so I don't actually melt the plastic. I'm feather edging the uh, repair on both sides because uh, I want to give the uh, repair material some uh, surface to uh, stick on. Now I'm actually making a hole. Yes, I'm making a hole, removing the uh, any loose material because it's not going to help with the structural uh, integrity of the repair. So we then uh, do a plastic uh, adhesion promoter. All this is part of the same system. I'm using the Evercoat system here. This is the um, urethane uh, adhesive that we're going to use for the repair. And uh, you put that on once the adhesion promoter has uh, flashed off. It's important that the adhesion promoter don't, uh, is not left to dry for more than 15 minutes before you do that or you have to reapply it. So the back is going to be supported by a patch, actually. This is a bumper repair patch. It's part of the Evercoat system. And uh, that hole is going to be supported there in the back. It makes for a very solid repair. And we're going to do the front while the back is still wet. It hasn't hardened in the back yet. So we're actually mi mixing the front and back repair together. So it, it becomes one seamless front to back repair and it's very solid. Now we shape it with the uh, sander. Once that's done, we go to the uh, paint booth and we're going to do the primer. Adhesion promoter again, so the primer will stick and uh, a little primer. We're going to bury our, uh, our repairs in primer and make sure the primer actually covers all of our uh, repair area and overlaps onto the original paint. Now we're going to blend uh, the surfaces together. We're going to feather edge our, uh, our primer onto the uh, paint, making sure we don't go through the primer, uh, because if we go through the primer, we're going to reprime. So this is now nicely sanded. 
we're back in the uh, paint booth, cleaning again, first with solvent, then uh, with a uh, plastic uh, cleaner, and a plastic cleaner is uh, sort of alcohol-based and uh, also helps with uh, controlling the uh, static electricity that uh, builds on plastic parts, so it uh, doesn't attract dust uh, too much. Now it's a tack cloth to remove uh, any last bit of, uh, of dust and uh, the first coat. The first coat is uh, what we call a blender. It's a, a transparent base coat and it's used to uh, fill the sand scratches actually. Uh, and uh, you know we do this with metallics to uh, help the metallics not lay into the sand scratches. It makes for a nicer, cleaner blend. So now we go with the first coat of base coat. We're going to concentrate on uh, on our uh, on our primer areas, which are going to be the most difficult to uh, to cover. Now the second coat is going to extend a little uh, further out. It's important when you're blending uh, some uh, paint like this to uh, to extend your coats a little wider every time, never stop in the same place, so uh, it fools the eye in uh, using the paint transparency to actually blend the repair in the old uh, color. Now here the color match is very good, so I'm not going to repaint the entire bumper, I'm going to keep it in the, its original color by just blending the, uh, the color in. So now a tack cloth and we're into a clear coat. We're almost there. Now the clear coat is, uh, is put in two coats. First coat is uh, semi-wet and the second coat is uh, real wet. And uh, it's important to have a good spray gun so that uh, the clear coat is atomized very finely, so uh, you minimize uh, the uh, orange peel. And there we go, that's the clear coat. Now the bumper back on the car, repair's gone, uh, the, the damage is gone, the repair looks uh, great, you can even see my uh, running shoes uh, in the bumper. <laughs> that's it for this car tip. Please visit our website at uh, www.bsgautomobile.com. See you there.